just quickly explaining the difference between interpretation and compilation by using QBasic and QuickBasic. I'm hopping into QBasic here. This is the interpreted version. Um, just a nice old program from the 1980s. I can write a program. Print hello Mr. Smith and if I hit F5 it runs. Right. Uh, I didn't even need to save that program because it's just sitting in um, memory there, but if I just save it in this folder where I'm at, uh, so hello, I'm going to call it hello, I always make sure it's less than 8 characters when I'm using these good old 16-bit programs, and um, there it is, hello.bass, if I right click and edit with notepad or view in notepad, um, just the usual Windows notepad, you can see it's just a straightforward text file and QBasic has been able to run it just directly from from here. So it interpreted it. It took that one line and it's um, run it itself as um, machine language. Let's close that down. Let's go and do the more tricky one. This is the compiler QB.exe and close. What do I need to do here again? Um, Ignore, close. Shh, how does it work? Just a quick little session looking at how QBasic, QuickBasic can be used to do the interpretation versus compilation thing. So um, I've got a folder here like a USB drive, it's got QB11 and uh, that's the QBasic folder and this is the interpreter, nice 1980s look to it. Um, this is a programming environment so I can save, a, I can write a program, print uh, hello Mr. Smith and I can save that. Save as hello S. I think I've got a hello there already. Um, F5 to run that. Hello Mr. Smith. So that program ran without me needing to compile or anything. It just QBasic just interpreted that first line and ran it. Um, it did its own um, version of the machine language. So I can look at that hello S dot BAS and that's just a very straightforward text file. So that was the interpreter, which is a very easy thing to do. The harder one, this is QB45. Um, this is the quick basic one. It's a little bit harder to get it running. Uh, if you double click it and you get this message, you can ignore that. If you get another message, there's something that you need to do in order to um, just um, make sure it's running in the right folder. You need to right click on it and properties and go to the program yep. and make sure that this command line and working are both the folder that it shows for your drive. I've got G drive here and it's got G drive here so that's all good. Right. So um, anyway QB.exe having fixed all of that ignore that and we're in. So I can do my print um, hello everyone file and I can save that save as hello and save in a default folder um, and that is still you know hello.bass has appeared down here and that is still um, just a, a text file oh, but, uh, <laughs> you can make it a text file I think in this case it chooses to make it a slightly more complex version anyway um, we're in quick basic here, yeah, that's good. Um, so what I can do now is instead of just running, I can make an exe file. I'm going to call it hello.exe, make exe, and down here hello.obgen, hello.exe have appeared. So hello.exe is now a program that I, I can close down quick basic here, 
close that. I'll close the other one just for clarity as well. And I can double click that one and run it. The trouble is it runs kind of quick. It's uh, not easy to see. So what you need to do is shift and hold down shift and right click. And that gives you an open command window here prompt. Okay, so I'm now in this folder and I can type in here hello.exe and it actually runs that program. So this is fully compiled. This hello.exe is in machine language now. And if I do edit with notepad, um, it's just not it's not a thing that makes any sense to do because uh, it's a binary file and um, the uh, the computer is not it looking at it as text just doesn't make any sense all right so that's the compiled one here and this was the interpreted one here It'd be great if you can get the difference between those clear